Every day, ordinary people make extraordinary choices as they negotiate unpredictable pathways to the peak of their expectations without ever taking the time to enjoy the view. Join me, Tish Tyndall, at this panoramic viewpoint of astonishing personal and professional progress as we find out why my next guest is living the fabulous life. Linda Michaels, you fabulous person. How are you? I'm great. How are you today, Tish? I'm really good. You know, how exciting that you're joining us. Where are you right now? I am in Los Angeles, California. Well, I'm in Lossy Mouth, which is in the north of Scotland. <laughs> Slightly great. different. A little bit. <laughs> Listen, I've been reading your bio and, and doing some digging. And, and how long have you been doing what you're doing in the industry? I mean, I know there have been many stages, but when did you start? Um, huh. So I started more from uh, doing makeup and hair. And that really started, I would say, after high school, but even school. You start out by just doing your friend's hair and makeup and you, you like it, and then you do more, and then you do more. And to be quite honest, when I graduated high school, um, I've always been the creative and the artist. And my sister uh, has always been the thinker and the doer. And so when she graduated, she's older than me. When she graduated high school, it was on to get her doctorate, on to be a doctor, eight years of college. And when I graduated, my parents were like, what are you going to do? And I was like, I guess I'll go to beauty school. <laughs> so for me, that turned out to be a great decision because now... 30 some odd years later, I still hold my cosmetology license and esthetician license, and it has always served me in different parts. So at first it served me with makeup and hair, and then it served me working in salons, in spas, and then now it serves me again doing makeup and hair for TV and film. And why, why, why makeup? You know, makeup is, it's, it's like, to me, it's like chalk drawing. I always enjoyed drawing, I always enjoyed art. And also the aspect of, I love the aspect of making people happy. And yeah. when you, it, it's almost, when, when I work on models, it's like they're already beautiful so you could like throw the makeup at them and they're still beautiful, you know? But yeah. the average person is like, how do I do this and how do I do that? So I love to teach, I love to enhance what people naturally have. And makeup is just, play it's smoke and mirrors it's color and texture and light and fun and that's what it should be because it's not a tattoo it's not permanent so give it a shot yeah. i know a lot of professional makeup artists kind of poo poo instagram artists and youtube artists but i'm i'm a, a fan of anybody who lets their creativity go and do what you want to do and make it your own and do you find that's how it goes if you're if you're on a shoot or you're getting ready for a film or, or a photograph session do you just go with it do you just go with the creative flow well you know it depends at first it was like that and then when you start to get into the industry more you're talking about having artistic directors who tell you what we want and sometimes those people are very strict and sometimes those people are in it to collaborate with you which is really the best part mm -hmm. of it the collaboration they say i want this to feel like a cloudy airy windy day huh? yeah. <laughs> and you have to interpret that to make it be in makeup and so that's the part that's interesting and then when i started doing films and tv that was a big learning curve too i moved to los angeles about five and a half years ago um just i lived in chicago my whole life and i moved here didn't know a soul <laughs> and um I had a couple kind of distant friends that I now am closer with, and I decided I want to do this, but that learning curve was huge because TV and film is much different when you have to talk about continuity and how, how things are out of order and how things need to look exactly the same each day is, uh, is a learning to be prepared for that. So that was, that's really quite the challenge and one wonderful and fun. And did you ever feel like giving up when you, you found these challenges? You know, what, what, <laughs> what, what did you feel like? You know, um, let's see, the first year I was here was kind of culture shock, even though it's still the U.S., much different than Chicago. And <laughs> yeah. I also thought when I moved here, oh, I've been doing makeup for 25 years. They're going to be beating down my door to come find me. Not the case. Mm -hmm. It is, at first, it is not about what you know. Is it about, it's about who you know. Okay. So what I realized is I had to start networking. And then what I realized is 
the best thing you need to do is humble your, yourself, be an assistant. And I needed to learn how to be an assistant. And once I learned how to be an assistant and learned how to network, that's when things started to change. And I realized one of the number one things had nothing to do with my skills. One of the number one things is people look at you like, are you somebody that I want to be on set with for 14 plus yeah. hours a day? Yes, That absolutely. was number one. So it didn't matter that I had been doing makeup 25 years. It didn't matter all my, my skills. And then later on, it definitely does turn into yeah. what you know. You know, So you can't have just one or the other. But at first, it's about personality, networking, getting yourself in there, and meeting people. And being kind. Oh, you know? kindness always. Kindness, humbling. And you know, I had been working, like I said, for 25 years. And I'm out in the desert, crouching next to a boulder with like snakes and scorpions, get, not getting paid to do a gig to learn yeah. so you got that's what you got to do and it's so important to to understand that i think you know for for students people who are who are training to to get into this industry and people who are starting out in this industry yeah. it's not something that there is a quick fix for oh you know to get, i'm and, sorry and you said um did i ever feel like i giving up yes, sure absolutely. very often you know what i mean it, and it's 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 less of an amount of time that that occurs. It does occur and it still occurs once in a while, but now I know how to attack it better. And now I know how to be like, okay, come back to now. What's happening right now? And Living so the heat and now for sure. you have to pivot. You have to pivot all the time. What's the next thought? Can I take this thought and change it? Can I make this be a little bit better? And you know, I just keep pivoting. I love my acting and that's a whole nother world of, uh, of acceptance and rejection and forgiveness and being yourself and so again pivot and what made you you know i mean i was looking at your credits you know so many films what you know what made you go into acting is it because you were around actors and actresses is this what it was you know what um it i think that i've always wanted to act but yeah i in my past, I thought that in Chicago, it's not like it is out here in LA. So in Chicago, I was like, well, I thought you had to be beautiful, statuesque, skinny model type to be an actor. I didn't realize Did that I came out here and I was like, wait a minute, anybody can be an actor. You just have to study, you know? So um, that's what stopped me. And so now I realized it's kind of what I've always wanted to do. I just didn't know it. And being on set um, as the makeup artist, and seeing the actors and wanting to be more in front of the camera doing that craft uh, just inspired me to learn more about that craft. So while I know the makeup end of it and then learned that, I decided the next thing to learn was the craft of acting and start to study seriously. Uh, for the last two years, I've been at a studio and I, and I still go now. So it's like a season of apprenticeships, really, and, you know, serving your time and, and working yeah. out what the skills are. And, yeah. you know, you have such a beautiful confidence and I mean, you really do. I don't know if that's something you feel on the inside, but, you know, I, I only met you, you know, under 20 minutes ago. And <laughs> you are you are so encouraging. You are so compelling to listen to and, and, and to talk to. Where do you think that comes from? Is that something you've always had or is it something you've developed? Um, I think definitely not something I've always had. I've absolutely developed it. I think that uh, maturing at age helped that a lot. I think different life circumstances help that a lot. I think that um, learning about who you are on the yeah. inside helps with that yeah. and to be okay with it. And right now in my life, my main focus is to be more myself. Yeah. And so I encourage people to you don't have to be something else, even though I decided to be an actor, which you are being something yeah. else all the time, but it comes from a place of genuineness within you. Of course. And if it doesn't, then you're acting. And if somebody catches you acting, you are not a good actor. No. You got to make it be something that you're not from a place within you that is genuine. And that's the trick. Yeah. So I've also been on a weight loss journey this year, uh, actually through acting, I got an audition to be part of a test group for a workout program. Okay. And um, the workout program, Beachbody, they gave me nutrition, they gave me food, and they gave me workouts every day that I did. And it was supposed to be six weeks, but then when COVID hit, it turned into 18 weeks. Okay. And so I committed to them to work out every single day and to eat the food that they gave me. That's yeah. it, nothing yeah. else. Yeah. And people are like, what did you cheat with? What did you? And I'm like, nothing. So I got the opportunity through COVID to have more of this um, 
fitness. So since I've lost about 75 pounds, it is, it's revealing more of me. And I realized that the weight was hiding me. I was hiding myself from the world. And now that more and more is coming off and out, I realized that it was never the problem. My weight was never the problem. It is being more me that's the problem. I need to to embrace me as everyone does. And if I lose more weight, it doesn't make me more me. No, no. (laughs) If I become more fit, it's, it's not the way it works. No. And, and, but, but being fit in this industry is, is, and I mean fit from a health point of view, is something yeah. that you need to sustain the hours and, and the lifestyle, isn't it? Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a surprise. Um, yeah. Even as a makeup artist, too, it's, it is difficult to be on your feet for 14 hours. That's just minimum. And as an actor, it's the same thing. You think that sitting around for in between the shots is exhausting. It is. And it seems like people are outside digging ditches and and running around. I'm like, but to be on set 14 hours a day for a week, it is not easy. And you do need to be fit for that. So the more fit, the better. Yeah. So that's really been a win-win. Is it for you in lockdown? Has it been something that really has been a a good positive journey for you? Yes, it has absolutely increased my confidence. My um, it's, it's at first when COVID hit, I think that we were all very kind of in shock and in grief. Yeah. And so it gave me something to do every day. I did a workout on zoom with other people every day at nine o'clock. Yeah. That's what we do. And at first it was like, well, if I accomplish that, I'm okay today, you know? And then it became, well, that became the norm to work out every day. Now, what else can I accomplish? Yes. And adding on to that. And yes, it has, it absolutely kept me sane. And now it's just, now it's definitely more lifestyle and it makes me happy. Yeah. You, uh, and you, you certainly, you, you, you look so happy and you, you feel to me, you know, so happy. I can see it um, in your eyes and, and, and the enthusiasm that you have for everything that you're, you're talking about. You know, if you were to, to look back, you know, if we were, if we were, you know, on this journey of yours together and we were walking through it and we, we, we looked back and around us, what, what would you see that you, you know, would think, you know, that helped me get to where I am now, you know, whether it's something to do with your makeup specialist um, experiences or your acting specialist experiences or, or you and, and, and your fitness, what helped you get to where you are now and how you feel now? Okay. Um, wow. Really wonderful question. And I think the biggest thing has to do with all of them. Number one, I have to stay with complete faith and certainty that if I could change anything in my life in the past, I wouldn't because it would not make me the person I am now. Correct. So right now in this moment, I, ha- I accept it. I am grateful for it. And I say, okay, you know what? Thank you, Spirit, for giving me everything that you gave me, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because that is who I am now. Now, how can I move forward and better that? And that attitude and that thought that runs through me is complete truth. Now, what has changed is that I've always had that thought. I mean, as much as like you can from like being a teenager and all that, I've always had that thought, but what has changed is the time frame that that thought occurs and lives in me. So the time frame meaning I would have something bad happen and then feel bad about myself and do whatever I did to act out and eat too much and whatever, punish myself, bad, bad, bad. The time frame to that thought was maybe like a week, a month. The time frame kept getting smaller to the thought of this is not the truth of me. Now I recognize it almost immediately. I, it has come to the point that if a thought comes in about a regret or a bad thing happens, I just, it's almost like I put, put it in my mind like I'm weeding a garden. And every yeah. time a thought comes up and it's a weed, I pluck it. I used to pluck it later. I used to be like, yeah. I'm going to pray about that. I'm going to meditate about that. I'm going to change my thoughts about that. I'm going to affirm. I do it immediately. The second that the thought comes up, I pull it and I go, oh, that is not the truth. I choose different. And it doesn't always work, but right now it does. And that, so that's the biggest thing over my life is that the time frame has changed from dealing, from being in the blackness for way too long to now maybe living in it for a couple of seconds or minutes and being like, wait. No, no, and, and wow, the imagery there, you know, I think pluck it is the, it has to be the pluck sentence, it. you know, <laughs> yeah, just pluck it, just you know, pluck it. we came up with a new hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's marvelous, you know, 
wow you are you are packed full of 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 imagery and 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 lessons for us all and and i wonder you know when i've i've looked at some of your work uh online and and it to me it, you know you're you're such an incredible artist and i think it crosses many genres um and one of the things that has come across to me when I've been doing my research and, and, and thinking about how I would um, ask you a couple of questions which, which will follow, is that you, you seem to embrace everything. You seem to embrace everybody that you work with and, and everything that you are doing because it is what you're doing and it is what you've been asked to do. Would that be right, Linda? Have I got that right? Yeah, absolutely. It's, and, and I will say too, it's a practice. I choose to say yes. Um, like this opportunity, I was like, yes, yes, yes. Some opportunities are much easier to say yes to than others. Yeah. Yes. And especially as an actor, um, it's, you got to just grab those opportunities and uh, that's what gets you known. So yes, absolutely true. And then you're the type of person that I want to be on set with because <laughs> you are grabbing opportunities and you are so encouraging, you know, and, and you're not saying you've got it right all the time. You're not saying you're, you're saying that right now you have developed mechanisms whereby you choose to live positively as much yeah. as you can. And that is absolutely true. And being on set is not easy. Uh, people think it's like, it's all glamour and it's like, you know what? Sometimes you are sitting in a sackcloth because you're playing an asylum patient in a movie that hasn't come out yet. And I'm sitting in a tent and the snake wrangler comes by to go, can you move? I need to get behind you to the snake that was there. So, and it's about a hundred degrees out and you're going pretty glamorous. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it, it's okay. You know what I mean? You gotta be positive and not complain and just go a, a day on set is better than no day on set. Absolutely. Oh, oh, you know, incredibly so. And this is something I think that we need to make sure that we teach in education, you know, especially to do with the performing arts and the creative industries, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, you know, we have to teach resilience. So we, you know, we've got to teach staying power because um, yes. that's something that, that is more important than, than so many of the things that you think should be at, uh, you know, at, at the most important part of the job, if you like. Um, you know, the skills, the looks, the whatever, okay? Um, I, I think you're telling me that you've just got to have that staying power. You know, you've got to stay yeah. fabulous, baby. That's what you've got to do. Yeah, this you is know? why I love your podcast. It, it is, it's not about having a fabulous life. It's about staying with a fabulous life, you know? It and is. it's work. And when I was younger, there wasn't, I, my father said to me, you know, in high school, he was like, you know, this whole theater thing and makeup, that's not a job. You can't do that. You, you know, what are you going to be, a doctor, an accountant, to this? Because that's what my sister was, so that went in alignment. And I taught at a beauty school. I taught makeup. And the first thing when I would have a new class, I would say, who's here right now that their parents said, mm, that's not a good thing to do? And I will tell you probably about 99% of them raised their hand. Absolutely. And I understand because parents are worried. They don't always, they didn't, or maybe some of them don't always understand that the arts are a valid career and they don't want their child to starve, no. starving artist, right? No. They no. want them to be successful. So I get the fear, but there is a whole world of creativity out there that is not understood by everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Because as long I, as you understand yeah. it and you stick to it, that's it. And look what it's doing for you as a person you yeah. know never mind the accolade of it look what it's doing for you as a whole person you know and how you are learning about yourself and how you're able to move forward positively you know and I, I really believe that is coming through your artistry and it's it's happening because of your art absolutely you know? I am so grateful for the path of especially well I recognize it now I didn't recognize it at the time I just no, always stuck to things because that was in my nature and I yeah. stuck to doing makeup and I stuck to it and I moved out here just like well this is what I want to do I, I was meant to be here and then yeah. acting studying acting has made me realize it's acting is about learning about yourself course, and it is it, it is a journey <laughs> so I'm grateful for that absolutely yeah and 
you know, you're, you're packing in so many careers here and you're obviously bridging them all beautifully um, and teaching and passionate about teaching and communicating uh, with up and coming um, Lindas. Yeah. Uh, I, I wonder, you know, I, I really do wonder what would be next for you? What, what would be the next thing that you would tackle? You know, really the next thing that I'm tackling right now is in the world of, like when yeah. you decide to be an actor, you need to learn about the business of acting. It's yeah. not just like, well, I, uh, I got my name on a submission list and I have an agent and I have a manager, what, I just sit here. That is not how it works. That is not what's going to happen. Yeah. You need to yeah. get staying power. You need to stay on it and you need to learn the business of it. So what's next for me is bigger and better roles. That's what, that's what's next for me. And my makeup is definitely, I don't, I, I will never leave it. A lot of my makeup no. friends are like, why aren't you doing it? And I'm like, I love makeup and it will always be there. But right now I got to, we only have so much bandwidth and so much energy, right? Yeah. So I want to devote more percentage of it to that acting. And I believe we make that happen. It's not just going to fall in my lap. Oh no, it doesn't. Yeah. You have to make it happen. <laughs> You're yeah, so firmly next, in charge. Yeah. And I do, um, you know, I, I, the teaching part of it is like, I, I just talked to a friend who's a brilliant director and he just had a, a film come out and I was just like, but I don't want to give up teaching. I don't want to be, give up uh, inspiring people. And I know that's like a big term, but like, he goes, well, he goes, have you met somebody named Oprah? I'm like, well, I never met her. He's like, have you seen her? And he goes, he inspires, she inspires people all the time. Mm -hmm. And she uh, was, a, was in the color purple and she, you know what I mean? So she's, Oscar nominated for the color purple. And I was like, yeah, I guess that's true, huh? So we can have it all. And I don't know how that's going to look, but it's going to oh, look like something. You don't want to be pigeonholed. You don't want to be pigeonholed. Let's, you yeah. know, this is amazing. This world of Linda Michaels is amazing and, and, and very, very inspiring. Thank you. And you know, even uh, when so I was on your friend right. the other day, something occurred and I put a video up about it. And I've never done a video on social media because I just, I don't know. But the, what happened was I went on to set and I had auditioned for a part and got it. And then I was on set and the, the shirt that they gave me was too small, like five sizes too small. And so I had given them my size, but they just didn't pay attention before the shoot. So then and what happened was they had to recast that role. And they said to me, will you be a background extra? And I was like, well, yeah, but I was in those moments. Those were hard moments because that struck at me from the place of my shame, my embarrassment, my feeling like I'm not worthy to be in this world because I'm a big person. I'm a person of size. So in those moments, it was like shattering to me. I, I was so just, you know, and then as the day went on, it's probably the longest amount of time I've been in that way in, in years. And I thought, okay, in myself, you have the power to change this in your mind. You can, you have the power to not let this be a shitty day, yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And what came to me was that, wait a minute, I am not wrong because I'm a big person. They're wrong because they made a mistake. That's it. It's not, it, 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 it sounds simple, but it was such a revelation to me. So that's what my, I did a little video. That's what my little video was for, just to say, it, me being less weight doesn't make me anything. Me just being more me makes me everything. So the message is to be more you, no matter what you are, size, gender, whatever be more you this is what the world needs yeah be, so be more out of you. that yeah be more you because you you know what you said was yes i'll take that extra part because i want that extra part you know you've just humiliated me you've just done all these things to me but i'm not going to show that i'm going to deal with that inside my head and I'm going to do my job exactly. you know that's exactly. what you just said and that that's incredibly inspiring yeah you know and I I, I know there'll be lots of of um, students from our performing arts academy who will be really really incredibly um helped by those words there Linda. Yeah, so and, and that, while I'm talking about students yeah. so no, go ahead well I'm talking well, I'm talking about students. I've got a question from one of our students, um, Bryony, who has a, uh, a, I think, an Instagram page and YouTube called Bry Does Life. You know, she's doing great things. Um, and, and, and she's asking, did having already established contacts within the industry through the makeup side help with your transition from off screen to on screen? That's a good question. <clears throat> Very good question. And I'll answer it in two ways. Number one, when I first started doing makeup online, 
art and makeup on set, um, it was, it's very separated. The crew and the, and the talent separated. So what my experience was, was that if I came onto a project as a makeup artist and I told them I do, I act, they're like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> they would not, it's very separated. And then if I came on as an actor and I said, oh, I do makeup, that was, they were like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> so at first, but let me tell you what happened this past weekend. One of my makeup artist friends was on set and she put a Facebook post up and said, hey, uh, we just had somebody get fired. We need somebody to play a female therapist now in Glendale. And I saw it within the first three minutes and I responded and I texted her and I said, hey, I'm open, let's do it. Because to me, again, it was Sunday. I wasn't doing anything else. You know, I totally wanted to do it. And I made it out there. And you know what? Here's the thing. I got to be the hero. I saved their shoot. Because that woman who was fired because she wouldn't wear a mask. And there are now COVID compliance officers on set. And he said, I will shut this shoot down if she doesn't wear a mask. And she said, I'm not wearing a mask. And they said, you're fired. So what an incredible opportunity for wow. me to step in. So yes, and now I'm like, you know what? I believed that my makeup work and the set work were totally separate and nobody would ever cross that line. But now that's not true because I changed my mind about it. Yeah, wow. So yes, everything is networking. Everything is meeting people. Be the same kind person you are and, and just show up. And yes, you can absolutely cross those lines. Not uh, at the moment, you know, like a lot of directors are like, go away, you kids, you're bothering me. But, but yes, absolutely. And you know, you know, I've, I've, this, this interview has been so incredibly um, dynamic and I actually find I've got two, two of you on my screen, you know, the smaller you and, and the full screen here. I can't, I'm looking everywhere, Linda, because I'm like, wow, this is amazing. You know, so it's like you're just, wow, you're, you're firing these incredible bullets of positivity, you know, I, and, and, and gosh, I, you know, I don't want this to come to an end and I really want to talk to you again. And I hope it's something that, you know, you would consider coming back and speaking to us again. Absolutely. Um, my, my question really has to be this looking back, you know, where we're, we're on this, this journey together today. And, and, and so looking back and looking around you, Linda Michaels, what would you see that is truly fabulous? Hmm. What, what isn't truly fabulous? Fabulous. Um, what is truly fabulous is the degree of kindness and love that is being expressed in life and in the world right now. And like, look, I'm talking to somebody in Scotland right now just about life and mm -hmm. how to live it. And it is like this, this, this uh, pandemic thing has brought us all into this place of like, what's real? What do we need? What is life going to be moving forward for ourselves and for the world? So that is what's fabulous. Bringing it to me, what's fabulous? I'm looking out my window right now and I see a palm tree. When I see a palm tree, I'm reminded that this is the dream and I am living it. And the dream doesn't change later on if I make millions of dollars or I get on some TV show that is a recurring, recurring role, which would be wonderful. All those things are great. I want all those things, but it doesn't change the now moment of what is fabulous, that I'm, I work out every day, that I get to talk to amazing people, that I get to express myself, computer and internet across the world. There are so many opportunities that we have for ourselves that can be more and more up and up. That's it. You know, I, I don't even know what else to say. I'm, I'm grateful for it all. I'm grateful for the connection of the internet. I'm grateful for my fabulous life. And I am absolutely overjoyed that you joined me today. Linda, you are, I can't wait to read all your books, <laughs> listen to all your podcasts and see a film about your life because I'll tell you, you are absolutely inspiring. And I'll tell you what's fabulous. You are, and that's for sure. You know? Thank you. Um, I, and, and I just want to say a, a massive thank you for taking this time to come uh, on, on the show today. Uh, we're, we're going to finish the show today, uh, Linda, with, a, with a, a story that um, came my way last year. And it's actually the story of, um, of two gentlemen, um, one who has passed away, um, and these gentlemen actually wrote the theme tune for 
one of the biggest um, American TV shows, you know, one of the biggest global hits. And yet they were never given the recognition, but they never gave up. Um, and um, we just thought today, because you're so full of this staying power, that today would be the time to, to air this song. So this is, um, the song is called, I Will Wait For You, and it's from the musical, uh, which is the Andy Claiborne story. And Linda, um, today I'm, I'm gonna dedicate that to you. So thank you so much. You. Please take care, stay safe, and keep doing what you're doing. And I hope to speak to you soon, Absolutely. Linda. Absolutely, you too. Thank you so much. I'm honored. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Put on your radio, listen to somebody's soul. Step inside those powerful melodies. Take a moment to hear the years, the blood, the sweat, the innocent tears of a poet, a painter, magnificent stranger, lifting you up and letting you know. You shall have music wherever you go. When I hear that song, I can hear it. I will wait for you. I want to shout it to the whole of the world. Cause everyone knows I'll be there for you. When I hear that song, It's time that everybody knows the truth You know I'm talking to you And I'll be there for you So when you turned on the radio Tuned into the latest show And recognized your powerful melody At number one, somebody else's song, another poet, a painter, magnificent stranger, lifting us up and letting us know, friends will be with us. Everyone knows I'll be there for you when I 